transistors can be combined into larger gates. A larger gate simply means that um, they take more than two inputs uh, to implement, implement logical uh, functions. So we have multiple inputs, but a single output corresponding uh, to a specific truth table uh, explaining the behavior of a of one of these logical functions. So the truth table can can be constructed also without a problem. We just uh, add another uh, input and again we uh, to construct this truth table we have to exhaust all possibilities of combinations of these inputs and specify what the output should be and then of course we can follow uh, the same set of rules to properly connect uh, our transistors and uh, their control gates uh, to these inputs and produce the output which would correspond to uh, these combinations. Our next uh, topic is uh, to specify or define combinational logic circuits. Combinational logic circuits cannot store any information. This is an interesting um, uh, observation. Uh, if we go back to the uh, examples of our gates, um, the, the idea behind them is that when we have these three inputs, a combination of three inputs, we get the, an instant result on the output. There is no any kind of delay. There is no, uh, no information is stored inside this closed uh, circuit. Uh, what happens is just like as soon as we supply a certain combination of inputs, we get a certain result and we can surely expect uh, it to be very specific based on this uh, logic. And that's the idea of combinational logic circuits. So combinational logic circuits cannot store any information. They're purely decision elements, so they get instant answer uh, to any cores corresponding combination of inputs. Um, and uh, uh, we will see later on that other structures uh, based on transistors and gates can store information. So we will study uh, the decision elements first, which are combinational logic circuits. And, like I said, decision elements depend just on the supply of specific input values. An example of um, combinational logic circuit is a multiplexer. And this is a two-level multiplexer uh, because it takes two data input uh, signals and one address input signal. And based on uh, zero or one input at the address, it will make a selection whether it should be a zero signal that passes through or it should be a uh, X1 in this diagram signal that passes through. So this will be uh, if the address is using signal one. So essentially it makes a selection. It's a selector device that makes a selection uh, of an input. Uh, and uh, this is a two level mul multiplexer, which indicates that uh, there are two inputs. If we had more inputs, we would have to have more uh, address uh, signals to specify which exact input uh, to select. So this is an example of uh, actual <clears throat> gates uh, constructed, uh, put together that implement the uh, multiplexer. So we have an S a signal, which is a selector uh, signal. And uh, if you follow the logic of these gates, uh, you will realize that when a, a selector signal is set to zero, the selected signal will be signal A. And uh, when S is set equal to 1, then the input uh, B will be selected to, uh, to be uh, our output. So the multiplexers uh, have uh, ability for us to um, uh, create uh, selectors or 
uh, addressable or addressing devices, which means that we can uh, specify which of the signals we want to choose in the output. And this is in uh, a common uh, digital circuitry symbol uh, for a multiplexer. A four input multiplexer uh, specifies that we have uh, four inputs um, and uh, we can uh, supply two selector uh, signals to choose one of them. And you can see that this type of circuitry with uh, four end gates and uh, one uh, m multiple input or gate uh, implements this type of circuit. Notice that each one of these inputs is connected to an end gate and the selector signals also supply to all of the end gate. I'll try to magnify this uh, to demonstrate that, for example, uh, when our input signal uh, uh, is uh, set to zero, for instance, and uh, the selector signals are also both set to a zero. Uh, this uh, makes a selection of this specific end gate to allow the input signal to pass through. Why? Because we have two inverter bubbles over here before we connect the selectors to the gate. And this means that if uh, A is zero, and uh, we have this selection right here, zero, zero. Of course, this, the, 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 the output of this will be zero because the end gate right here, this is a set of end gates, end, um, end gates that we're using here, uh, will be not letting anything, uh, through un un unless all three of them are set to one. But if this input changes to 1 and this remains 0, 0, then uh, the signals here will be 1, bubbles will invert zeros to make them 1 and 1, and in this case, of course, we are going to get uh, an output, an OR gate, of course, will, will let the signal through, so this will be set to 1. So here, we're Ex um, uh, selecting this input, input A, because we specify this address right here. In case uh, if we change uh, the address, and uh, for the sake of demonstration, I'll change it to 1, 1. In this case, you see that this gate does not have any inversion bubbles, so it will be simply using signals 1 and 1 because that's our uh, selection uh, right now. And as soon as D, this is the D uh, input, becomes 1, we will be letting it through, and this will be 1. So we're making selection of uh, this uh, input D by specifying its address. And uh, B and C would be, uh, would be uh, selected. Let's just iterate through all of them essentially we can indicate that the the when selection is 0 0 we're selecting a when selection is 0 1 we'll be selecting uh, b and then 1 0 and 1 1 these are the selections that correspond to these inputs and this four input multiplexer will be able to uh, uh, implement this kind of device uh, in a digital circuitry, when we use uh, sim symbols for multiplexers, um, it's uh, very uh, typical to use a short uh, cross-wired symbol and indicate how many wires are in this uh, bus of wires. In this case, selector uh, contains two wires, and these uh, cross symbols indicate that only one um, wire is present in inputs A, B, C, and D, and likewise in the output we also have a little short cross uh, cross wire uh, symbol indicating that there's only one output right here. 
So this is the multiplexer. Once again, it's a selector of uh, specific input based on the address that is being specified or selector signal that is being uh, specified. And all unique combinations of selector signals correspond to only one unique input that this multiplexer will be selecting at any given time.